Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to make an easy, quick, and automated finance tracking spreadsheet in Google Sheets. By the end of this video, you're going to have a sheet that looks something like this, and there's going to be a few different tabs. I'm really excited to get started, so let's go. So here we have our blank spreadsheet. In our first sheet, we're going to want to track all of our transactions that we make. So we're going to rename this first sheet our journal. This is where all the journal entries go. And for each journal entry, we may want to know the date in which it occurred, the account it is in, whether it is the gas expense account or revenue from work account, the amount of the transaction, and any other notes you may have on it. And as we go through the spreadsheet, we're going to want to format it in a certain way to make it look good. So I'm going to click on this select all section here, and I'm going to select Montserrat as the font. I just like it as the font for a spreadsheet like this. And then in row two, we are going to format our date. So say a transaction occurs on January 1st, 2023, we are going to highlight this row or this column, column A, click on format number and format it as a date so that if we were to delete this and type in one slash two, it knows to include the year as well. Next, as we fill in the account in which this transaction took place in, we want to recognize that every account we're going to use in the spreadsheet is either a revenue or an expense. So for example, in this transaction, we received a paycheck from our job. So we're going to call that account work revenue, making sure it has the word revenue in it. Also, we're going to resize this column B by going in here, resizing it. We're going to make it size 200. As for the amount, if our paycheck was say $540, we would type that in. And I'm then going to select column C and format number. We're going to format it as accounting. I'm also going to want to resize this column to 150. As for the notes section, you don't need to write extensive notes about each transaction, but it's available if you need it. Say in this example, we work as a pizza delivery guy. We will say pizza place for the notes. And then this, we want to allow more room. So we're going to resize column D to 600. I also want the date to be centered. So I'm going to highlight this column and horizontally align it in the center. Then I'm going to return the date back to left aligned. So now we can do another example transaction. I'm going to click on this most recent transaction, insert one row above so that we have the most recent ones at the top as we go. And the date is January 4th. The account is gas expense because we bought gas and the amount comes to $24 and 31 cents. And for a note, we're just going to say gas. Don't need anything too fancy there. We now have a whole set of sample transactions onto our journal sheet, but let's make it look a little bit nicer first. I'm going to go to row one and insert one row above to make a header. For this header, I'm going to want to merge all four of these cells together by merging here. Next, I'm going to type in income and expenses 2023, because that's the year. I'm also going to center this. Next, I'm going to highlight that header and all these column headings here, and make them bold. I'm also going to change the color up here to, I mean, you can make it whatever you want, but I'll make it this dark blue and I'll make these a different dark blue. And then to make this pop more, I'm going to make this text color white. I think that looks a little bit nicer, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to create alternating colors by highlighting all of our data, going to format, alternating colors, removing the header option here, hit done. And now every time we insert rows above here, it will also work with the alternating colors. And one last thing, we're going to highlight this entire range of data, go to the border section and select all borders. I just think this makes everything look a lot nicer and cleaner. One more measure to make this look better is also functionally important. We are going to select the column B, go to format and conditional formatting. 
As I explained earlier, every account is either an expense or a revenue. We want the expenses to show up as red and the revenues to show up as blue. So we can do that by format cells if text contains, if it contains the word expense, we're going to make it this red, it's the second lightest red, hit done. Add another rule, do the same thing, format if text contains, if it contains revenue, then we are going to make it this second lightest blue and hit done. And now we're really getting somewhere. Let's X out of conditional formatting and test it. So this most recent transaction was a gas expense. If we delete it, the cell is now white. We type in, if we type in just gas, nothing's gonna happen. We have to type in the word expense and now it becomes red. However, we don't necessarily want to type the name of the account every single time because if you make a typo or type in the account differently than you've typed it in before, it's not gonna work with the whole functionality of the spreadsheet. And for that reason, we want to create a drop-down menu so that when I click on one of these cells, instead of typing gas expense, I can select gas expense from a list of all our accounts. And that is where the accounts page comes into play. We are going to add a sheet and rename it accounts. This is where we list all of our accounts. So I'm gonna put that in in one second. Now we have what can be considered a completed list of our accounts. All the accounts here you will find on the journal except for other revenue and other expense. Save these accounts for things you may not know how to categorize and that may be infrequent. Our accounts list will really be used back on the journal tab. So like I explained before, we want to create a drop down menu. To do this, we are going to highlight cells B3 to B19, the entire range that needs a drop down menu for the account. Select data, then data validation. And once we get here, we have to add a rule. Criteria is drop down from a range, and we are going to select data range here. Then we go back to the accounts page. We highlight this entire range and hit OK. Now you can see here that the drop down list has all of our accounts, both revenues and expenses. But one more change I would like to make to make this look a little bit better. Um, I don't really like this gray area here. So we can do that by scrolling down under data validation rules, selecting advanced options. And then the display style is currently a chip. We want it to be an arrow. And I just think that looks way better. The journal sheet, as well as the accounts sheet, are now both completely done, unless you're adding accounts or transactions, of course, but they are all set up. Now you have everything you need to record your transactions, and next is the cool part where we see how to use this data. To do this, we are going to create a new sheet, and we are going to rename it Net Income. This is where you track your total revenue, total expenses, and revenue minus expenses, your total net income. This sheet is just going to pull all of this data from the journal and total it in here. To start creating your net income page, we are first going to set up a revenue table. So our title will be revenues 2023. And then under this, we're going to have each month. So starting with January, then we will drag down all 12 months to December. Next to it is where we are going to display the total. So for now, we'll just put the number zero for all of them. And we're going to also format as accounting again. As for making our revenues table look a little more presentable, I'd first like to select all of the cells and make them the font Montserrat once again. I'm then going to select our revenues heading and then merge it with the cell in C2 right next to it. By merging cells, then I'm going to center. I'm then going to also make this size 14 font to make it a little bigger and easier to see and I'm going to bold it as well. For coloring I'm going to select the third lightest blue down as the fill color and make the text color white. Now I'm going to make the dollar value cells font size 12 and make the month cells font size 11. We can also center and bold the months to make them stand out a little bit more and for column C, we can resize it and make it 160. Finally, I'm going to put borders around all these cells by going back into borders and selecting all borders. And now that we have this all settled, we can start creating our actual sum ifs function. 
for our sum of function, we want each of these months to return the revenue totals for the month in question. So to do that, we need the sum ifs function to know the start day of the month and the end day of the month. You'll see in a second what I mean, but back on the journal slide, when we type in a date, that is how we will know over here which month to categorize the transaction into. So I'm quickly going to set up a little reference table with all the start dates and end dates for each month. All I need to do off to the side here is type in January for the month, 1 slash 1 for the start date, 1 slash 31 for the end date. Of course, we don't like how these are formatted, so we will highlight these two columns, go into format, number, and date. I'm also going to center all of these. And then if you just select these three cells and drag them all the way down, they will autofill to the correct data. Now we are finally ready to input our sum ifs function. To do this, we're going to click in our January revenue cell and start typing equals sum ifs. Open our parentheses. And as you can see, Google Sheets opens up a list of what the function should look like here. The first part of our function is the sum range, which we have to click back onto the journal sheet to collect. We are going to select column C in its entirety as our sum range. Next, we are going to need our first criterion range, our first criterion. So our first criteria range will be column B. But first, we need to add a comma, and then we can select column B. Remember that we are looking for January revenues. So in column B, we want to sum values that have the word revenue inside it. So again, we'll select a comma to go to that part. And then usually in this kind of function, you would put in quotations the word revenue. What this function now does is it sums everything in column C if the corresponding cell in column B is the word revenue. But we want it to be only if it contains the word revenue, not if it equals revenue exactly. To do this, we are going to use the asterisk, which is a wildcard character. So by entering the asterisk here and here, this now means that if a cell in column B just contains the word revenue, it will sum column C. The only issue now is that this sums everything for the entire year, regardless of the month. So we want one more criteria range to determine the appropriate month. So we will add another comma, and then criteria range 2 is column A. Now we can go back to our net income sheet, add a comma, and criteria 2 in quotations, we will write greater than or equal to by the greater than and equal to signs. And our quotations write an and symbol and then select the cell January 1st. We will then add a comma and move on to the final part that is saying that we sum everything less than or equal to January 31st. So again, we're going to go back to the journal page, select column A, add another comma, head back to net income, and then in quotations, write less than or equal to, end quotations, and then write the and symbol again, and select the end date January 31st. Then when we hit enter, we find that our January revenue equals 1,088.84. And if we go back to our journal, that adds up with 540 plus 540 plus 884. And since we've done this for one month, we've now done it for every month. If we go back to the net income tab, I'm noticing that the start dates and end dates are off. So we're going to fix that by doing February 1st and February 28th, highlighting these and dragging them back down. Now we have the proper start dates and end dates. So if we select this cell and drag it all the way down, all this is going to do is change the start dates and end dates. So let's drag it all the way down. We see February fill in with 1080, which if we go back to check makes sense, 540 plus 540. And none of the other months have filled in yet, so we're perfect. We'll also want to know the total for the year, and we can do that with the sum function. Underneath the December total, we can type in equals, sum, and then highlight this entire range. Here we will track our revenue total for the entire year of 2023. And I'm quickly going to format this a little bit better. 2023, 
we can center that, add borders, bold and size 12, change the background color, and change the text color. And to prepare copying this over to the expenses table, we're first going to add a couple more columns of room and go back into our January function and notice that we want all of these columns to stay as the same letter. When we copy this function over, if we copy it over two columns, every column up here will also move over two columns. So to keep that from happening, we need to put a dollar sign in front of all of these letters for journal C, journal B, journal A, the J here, journal A here, and K here. And that creates a proper reference, so none of this will change. We hit enter, and then we're gonna wanna drag this down so that every month has the same dollar sign added. And then I'm just gonna highlight these two columns, B and C, copy, move them over to E and F, and paste. The only thing we have to do now to change this to expense is go back into January and change this word revenue to expense. Once we copy all of this down, we now have the total revenues and total expenses and once again, we're going to format expenses a little bit differently. Obviously, we need the word expenses here. As for the color, we're going to make it red. And for the color down here, we are also going to make it red. Last but not least, we're going to want to copy in a net income page. So we will add a few more columns. I'm also going to want to shrink these columns in between just so we can fit more on the page at once, size 25. And then like before, I'm going to copy columns E and F, paste them to H and I. And then the net income function here is real easy. Go to January, delete this, hit equals the revenue total minus the expense total. And then when we copy all this down, we can now see the net incomes for each month. To format, I'm just going to change expenses to net income. And then I will also change the color from red to green. And down here, I will use another green like this. And with that, you now have a perfectly functioning revenue, expense, and net income tracker based on all of these transactions. You could say that your spreadsheet is done here, which it may be if that's what fits you best. But I'm going to add one more part where you can track each revenue and expense by account. So this totals all your revenues and all your expenses. But what if you want to know all your dividend revenues for the year or all your gas expenses. To do this, we're going to need to make one last new sheet. Let's duplicate our net income sheet by right clicking on it and selecting duplicate. And we're going to rename it reports. Here's where we can run a report on any one of our expense or revenue accounts. Let's highlight columns H and I and delete them since we don't need net income for this sheet. Now let's say we want to run a report on our dividend revenue for the year. I'm going to go into this title heading here and rename it Dividend Revenue. Then all I have to do is go into the original January function and change this word right here, Revenue, to the heading cell instead. To do this, we'll delete the word Revenue and instead click on this cell B2. I'm also going to want to use dollar signs in front of the B and the 2 to make sure that when we drag this function down, this does not change. Hit Enter and you can now see after we drag this down, that it displays 884 for dividend revenue in the month of January, which when you check the journal, turns out to be correct. Now let's go back to the sheet to finish it up by inserting a drop-down list once again so you can do this a little easier. A reminder from when we did this earlier, you select data, data validation, then we're going to add our rule, select drop down from a range, then we can select data range, go back to the accounts page, and make sure that we select all of these accounts. Hit OK, done, and then go back to reports. And you see you have the proper drop down menu here. But again, we're going to go back into data validation rules and scroll down to advanced options. Click on advanced options and then change the style to arrow. Hit done. And that's it. Real quick, let's do it with expenses. We'll X out of this. Type in gas expense up here. Then we can go into the January function switch out this expense for this cell E2, put in our dollar signs in front of the E and in front of the 2, hit enter, and then drag all the way down. And then last, we'll insert a drop-down menu here as well. Click on this, 
data, data validation. And all we have to do here is click back on the same rule we made before. And then in the apply to range box, we just add a comma and then E2, E2, to add this as another spot where we have a drop down list. If you want, you could separate revenues in their own drop down list and expenses in their own as well, which you are now capable of. And one last note, if you want to see multiple revenue or expense accounts at a time, you can simply copy and paste this over and add some more space for it. And with that, our spreadsheet is done. All four sheets are complete and you now have everything you need to complete an automated income and expenses tracker. I worked very hard on this video, so I'd appreciate a like, maybe a subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.